Yeah, hi Perfect. everyone. Uh, my name is Vadia Kudabux. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Saskatchewan in Canada. So um, today I'm going to focus on technical debt in our packages. Is this moving? Um, technical debt has been primarily studied in object-oriented system, mostly commercial software in Java. So in today's talk, we are going to take the path less traveled and focus on R. Um, more specifically, uh, we're going to explore technical debt in R packages. So why R? Um, R has gained popularity over the last few years, as we can see in these images. Um, most R developers are also not software developers by training, so they are more versed in their respective domains. So here we're talking about geologists, physicists, bioinformaticians, etc. So these uh, people eventually became, uh, become the end users of the software that they implement. And the R ecosystem is relatively young and unexplored. So um, this is a great opportunity for us to look at uh, technical depth in R packages from its infancy and also uh, understand the nuances in how R developers differ from others. So in the first part of the talk, I'll focus on a study where we examine technical depth, uh, which is documented in the peer review of uh, our packages in our open site. So our open site uh, features basically a platform to organize and review uh, our packages. And it has established a peer review process uh, for uh, packages that are submitted before they are published. So in this study, we um, explore the technical depth types mentioned in these reviews, their distribution, and whether these uh, types of depth highlighted differ uh, based on uh, different user roles. So by user roles here, we refer to authors, reviewers, and editors of these uh, R packages. So we came up with a taxonomy of uh, 10, 10 different types of depth. Uh, grouped according to these uh, three perspectives. So perspective is basically who is affected by a particular type of death. So we have three perspectives here, the user, uh, developer, and CRAN. So CRAN is the comprehensive uh, uh, archive network, which is basically, uh, which basically performs automated checks on our packages. Here, uh, we can see that different user roles focus on different types of death mentioned in these reviews. So what we can learn from this is that different categories of people have different perspectives of what technical debt means when it comes to our packages. So the next uh, set of results here is uh, when we look at uh, how often uh, these type of debt come up in the reviews, we see that documentation debt is uh, basically the most valued. And this is really interesting because in um, traditional object-oriented uh, system, most studies have shown that a code depth, design depth are the most prominent and developers focused on managing those as a priority. Whereas in a growing ecosystem like R, documentation is the most important. So um, here we look at the different uh, roles and what type of depth do they focus on? So we can see that if you're an author, you're mostly focused on defect debt. However, editors and, uh, editors and reviewers have different priority. They focus more on documentation, which kind of makes sense because they want the R packages to be reused, customized, and extended. So in the second part of the study, um, in the second study, um, I'm gonna focus on uh, self-admitted technical debt again in R packages. So self-admitted technical debt are basically situations where the developers are aware that the implementation, the correct implementation is not optimal and they write comments in the source code to alert of such cases. So in this study, we focused on uh, automated detection of uh, SATD using classification models. So we used uh, traditional machine learning models and also neural nets, including transformer models. So what we wanted to explore in this study is uh, what is the best model for classifying uh, self-admitted technical debt and its types. And we also investigate the causes of technical debt, um, uh, the causes leading to the occurrences of uh, SATD in our packages. 
However, in this talk, I'll only focus on the automated detection part. So we can see um, a transformer model, Alberta and, Albert and Roberta, um, have a better results when it comes to uh, SATD prediction. So they have better performance overall. So higher recall, higher precision, and higher F1 score. However, they are more computationally um, expensive if we look at the training time compared to other models. And then we have CNN, uh, which has a pretty good performance overall, both in terms of training time and performance. So we can say that um, CNN seems to hit the sweet spot. However, when we look at uh, these uh, models, uh, when we look at how um, you know, these models perform when it comes to a specific type of depth, we can see that some perform better than others. And um, as we know that documentation depth is important for our packages from our first study, we can see that some of these uh, models do not detect a documentation depth. And we can see some of them do not also detect uh, things like people depth. So here there are some trade-offs which have to be made. Um, you know, we have to decide what is important when picking a model for automated depth det detection. Is it more important uh, to uh, extract all the different types of depth or is the performance of the model um, you know, important? So even in the best performing model, Roberta, we can see that the, uh, there are some uh, pretty low numbers, uh, meaning that some type of depth are harder to detect than, than others. So there are some takeaways based on these two studies. Um, uh, so some uh, the first one is documentation is important in R uh, to understand how to get started, uh, how to use the packages. And this also provides an opportunity um, to investigate what constitutes good documentation in R, how to decrease documentation depth, and also promote, uh, promote the reuse of R packages. Uh, second, uh, different users focus on different types of depth. Uh, so the end users have different needs and priorities compared to the editors and reviewers. Lastly, uh, some types of depth are more challenging to detect. I'm gonna go over a couple of examples here. Uh, requirement depth is one of those um, you know, challenging uh, type of depth to detect. And when we investigated, we saw that the structure, the wording, the quality of the comments are fluctuated considerably. And we also know that our packages are used in multiple domains, bioinformatics, geography, et cetera. And the way the requirements are documented, they also vary considerably. The next one is algorithm depth. Algorithm depth was hard to detect because there's not a lot of keywords for detecting this type of depth. So these are all hard problems. And it would be super interesting if we could build a tool to better detect such uh, types of, of depth. So thank you for listening. Um, if you're interested in talking more about these studies or collaborating, feel free to reach out. Fantastic. Great job. Love it. Love it. I mean, just all of the really cool things going on here today. Uh, never really thought explicitly about technical debt in the context of R, but this is thought provoking because I feel like, especially with the documentation debt, I use a lot of R documentation, and I've found that there's a lot out there, but it's interesting. I wonder when, when the documentation, in terms of this work, is the documentation debt internal, right? Like internal documentation, is that kind of what that's referring to, or is that on a larger um, scale? No, we mostly looked at, you know, like uh, readme files and, you know, documentation provided by the authors, you know, so that the packages could be reused and used mm -hmm. by other people, extended. Got it. We Got also it. saw that there are a lot of packages which actually does the same thing. So why are people not reusing, you know, because they don't really understand what's going on, right? So they mm -hmm. built something from scratch. Ah, oh, that is interesting. If you don't understand it, then you don't know it exists. And so you yeah, make it you don't thinking really know it doesn't. What it's doing as well. Yeah. How to oh, use it. Yeah. The power of documentation. Why have we not grasped? I love it. Okay, great. Any other questions? I think we have time for some more. Okay. I see another question came into Slack here from Greg. Greg wants to know, how do people learn how to write decent documentation? Seems like it's taught even less than debugging or testing. 
plus one on that one. <laughs> we have um, we have ongoing work. So this is, um, you know, part of the work that we are doing. We have ongoing work we, where we um, actually look at, um, you know, uh, a bunch of, of documentation, a bunch of like read me's and things like that. And we came up with like a taxonomy. So this is still work in review. Uh, but, you know, like uh, a checklist and, 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 you know, taxonomies, what should be included in documentation and so on, how to make it useful. So this is, um, you know, ongoing work. So we have something coming up, hopefully in the next few months.